Having already talked about what an electric motor is, now I'm going to talk about a few different types of electric motors. Specifically, I'm going to talk about DC brush motors, asynchronous, and synchronous. I'm Corey Foster at Valen Corporation. Let's see what we can learn. There are plenty of people who know way more about some types of electric motors than I do, so I reached out to a good friend of mine and colleague, John Brokaw, to give some of his input on some of these types. So John, what can you tell me about the DC brush motor? This is the oldest school, down and dirtiest motor in, in creation. This thing's been around, you see it right here on the slide, it's invented by Faraday in 1821. So it's a 200-year technology. Um, it's actually still used in a lot of applications because it's relatively inexpensive. It does have a few known issues that everybody's aware of, uh, most most commonly being the uh, the wear on the brushes. Um, you're getting, you have these uh, ceramic carbon brushes that are passing the current to the uh, to the rotor that's rotating, and the wear on those brushes, they just, like anything, they eventually wear out and you have to be replaced. Um, this takes your motor down, whatever vehicle it's working on down, and uh, it's just a nuisance. So where the DC brush motor here is commutated by a break in the wires and, and these brushes here, the AC motor actually is commutated by the sinusoidal frequency of the AC current coming in and goes to the contactors here. Now this is showing the coil being on the inside, but really usually the coil is the stator on the outside with the rotor on the inside that is the one that's turning. But this is good for comparison, the difference between the AC and DC and how they're commutated. Before I talk any more about AC motors, let's talk about synchronous versus asynchronous. An AC synchronous motor doesn't have any magnets in it, so it actually turns slower than the synchronous speed of the frequency coming into it. So I already talked about how an AC motor commutates off the AC frequency coming in, 60 hertz here in the US. But an asynchronous motor, since it doesn't have the magnets, will actually fall behind that and it will always be running to catch up. So you can see here that it's the frequency coming in times 120 divided by the number of poles minus some slip. So it's always just going to be running to catch up. Whereas a synchronous motor has some permanent magnets in it, so it's locked into the frequency being controlled that's coming into it. And it's always going to turn at that synchronous speed. I have to jump back to John Brokaw for this one. John, are AC induction and asynchronous motors the same thing? All AC induction motors are asynchronous, but you can get synchronous pseudo-synchronous applications out of them by pairing them with feedback and doing vector control on them. Um, that's where you're actually controlling the angle between those two and controlling that slip frequency to be exactly where you want it to be to generate the torque speed performance of the application. And, and here we have the guts of an AC induction motor. So you can see that this is a, a classic induction motor. You don't see any um, brushes or anything tying to it. You have that uh, rotor assembly there in the middle that's tied to the shaft going through it. Um, you have uh, the only wearing component on a typical AC induction motor are the bearings, which you can see at the ends of the motor. There are a number of accessories that can be added to an induction motor depending on what the application is. Uh, one of the primary ones to think about is cooling. This one has a fan, so it's called a uh, to, This is typically looks like a totally enclosed fan-cooled motor. You can also have um, non-ventilated motors, uh, which are sealed. You can have an open motor where you actually have air flowing through the motor. Um, you can have forced air on these things. You can put uh, hydraulic uh, cooling jackets on motors. There's lots of different ways to cool a motor off. Um, the thing to remember at the end of the day, an electric motor is a coil of copper and you're putting electricity through it. Whenever that happens, that's an electric heater. So you're going to generate heat in the system. And 
some way you've got to get that heat out. So heat management is one of the key issues in, in selecting and sizing and operating a motor. Uh, other wearing components you can see are the, uh, the bearings. Bearings like any bearing, like bearings on your car. Eventually you're going to have to replace them because they do wear out. Um, there are some other accessories, um, gaskets, seals, different things, depending on the environment you're actually putting your induction motor into and what the application is. Let's talk about AC motors and the VFDs, the variable frequency drives that run them. What do you think of them? Uh, VFDs are great. It really depends on the application. Usually you're talking about a couple different things. One is what do you want, how do you want the motor to start? And there's a number of different ways of doing this. You can start across the line. What that means is basically you just have a switch and you're basically going, yak, and all of a sudden current starts flowing off of the electric grid. Um, issues with this. One, it's a little hard on the motor because you're putting a surge into the motor. Um, this can also affect your local power grid. Computers that are on that system really don't like it when you do this. Um, it, it's a really rough way to start a motor. Um, it's done. It's done in a lot of different places where it doesn't matter. Say if you're running a pump for an irrigation facility, you're usually on a dedicated line. There's not a lot of computers around that are going to be sensitive to it. You're just throwing a thing and starting a pump. Um, the other method is using a soft start. These are electronic components that basically slowly ramp up the voltage over 5, 10, 15 seconds to allow that closure to be a little bit smoother. Uh, it's a lot easier on the motor and a lot less uh, noise gets back generated onto your electric grid. Um, that's the down and dirty old school been done for a couple hundred years way of starting an electric motor. Uh, since the 60s, we've had uh, variable frequency drives uh, with the advent of semiconductors. We're able to do different um, pulse width modulations to start and control the frequency of an AC induction motor. Remember, motors follow the frequency coming into them. So by adjusting the frequency, you can adjust the speed of a motor. Um, this has a lot of advantages. So uh, pump application, you can actually control how much water you're pumping and if, where you're working on the, the uh, pump motor curve. Um, get you a little bit more efficiency. You can optimize the, the application. Um, you can also then slowly ramp up the velocity so you're not just closing the line so it makes it a lot smoother and a lot cleaner for, for the power grid. Um, note some VFDs you may need to put some filter in because they do create some harmonics that can backfeed into your power grid. Uh, but in general, a VFD is a, a lot cleaner electrically uh, way of installing and starting a motor. To drive home the point of what a synchronous motor is, is it is characterized by the constant speed of the rotation, which is independent of the load, but linked to the supply frequency or the current, depending upon the drive type. That's where the term synchronous comes from. And this is mostly done via the permanent magnets that are on there. If you look here at the construction, it looks quite a bit different than the AC induction motor. I'm going to have John Brokaw point out a few things for us. Note on a synchronous motor, a couple of things that are always going to be there. You will always have feedback on a synchronous motor. Uh, you do this because you need to know where the, core, where the actual magnets are, because they're alternating north, north, south, north, south around the rotor. As you can see in, this, uh, in the diagram in the lower right, you can see all the little surface mounted magnets on there. And they're actually, if you actually put a magnet on there, you would actually see they're alternating north, south, north, south, north, south as you go around the rotor. Um, this is what then the coils react against and are able to actually spin that by alternating. Um, without the feedback on the device, you wouldn't know where you are to turn the right coil on or off and you can end up with the system fighting itself. So John, this really begs the question, are synchronous and servo motors the same thing? All AC servo motors are synchronous motors. All synchronous motors are not servo motors. Um, there are some uh, oddball out motors out there that are synchronous that are not 
servo motors, uh, switch reluctance motors, stepper motors are synchronous because they're following the frequency, but they are not servo motors. To put the two types of motors side by side, you can see how the construction is similar, but also how it's different. And the asynchronous motors can be huge. They can be absolutely huge, you know, the size of a small room. The synchronous motors, the magnets get too expensive, so they're really not going to be any bigger than a large cat, usually at the most. But there's a few similarities, a few differences. Now John really wanted to make sure that I explain the importance of the horsepower calculation. Power equals torque times speed. Power can be in horsepower or it can be in watts. The calculation I like to use just off of memory is that horsepower is equal to torque in ounce inches times speed in revolutions per second divided by 16,800. Now this is important because the, uh, the asynchronous motors and the AC motors are rated in horsepower. But if you have a servo motor, we have speed torque curves that oftentimes look like this, where you have torque over here and you have speed here. This is pretty much all the same, uh, same uh, power from start to finish, but it is a production of the torque and speed. So we don't talk about sizing a servo motor or a synchronous motor oftentimes in terms of power. We talk about it in terms of speed and torque. So if somebody's wanted to go from an AC motor to a servo motor, they can't just say, hey, give me a one kilowatt motor. They do, and we try to accommodate, but really the better information is how much speed and torque do you need. Um, so that's really important here. And one horsepower is equal to 756 watts. One last comparison here. The important part about this graphic here is the different types of applications. The asynchronous motors are really better at continuous velocity sort of applications, whereas synchronous motors are needed for uh, more accurate velocity, but also the positioning type applications. So I hope that helps. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. Reach out to us here. Thank you, John Brokaw, for assisting. I learned a lot today. I hope this helps.